testimony continues to be delivered at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry. Today we've been hearing from Transnet Chairperson Popomolefe, who is still on the stand. In fact, the Zondo Commission has heard how Gupta Associates milked Transnet for billions of rand through locomotive contracts. ENCA's Aaron Bates joining me now on set to talk more about the day's testimony. And Aaron Bates, uh, Popomolefe continuing to speak, of course, this afternoon, but he's already said quite a lot about the goings-on at Transnet. Let's talk about these billions, which he says were essentially stolen. How was that done? Well, he's described uh, the real erosion of governance structures within Transnet and said that he and his board found a horror show when they arrived. And uh, he's highlighted particularly some locomotives contracts. So contracts to buy locomotives for the Transnet network and how these fitted in with a project to siphon money out of Transnet. Let's take a look at some of that testimony. The process has got to be fair, it has got to be just, it, it has got to be cost um, effective, amongst others. <clears throat> um, th those, those clearly were, were ignored, and uh, <clears throat> these provisions were ignored, um, and one sees in the findings of the report unimaginable arrogance uh, where China South Ray bid to supply uh, I, if I remember well is 359 locomotives uh, to South Africa I think those ones were electric if I remember well and then they also allow for a back-to-back -back service agreement to be entered into between Tequestra, which is a company of Salim Esa, uh, an associate of the Guptas, uh, with a company called China South Rail Hong Kong. And the basis of that agreement says we are responsible for you getting the contract in South Africa. Which means they are saying there was no fair competition. Uh, we went in there, we told our friends inside Transnet in the Board Acquisition and Disposals Committee that you must get to this and disposals committee at the time. Now, the, the chairman of the, uh, the board acquisition and disposals committee at the time uh, was a man called Iqbal Sharma, who was a business associate of Salim Esa, who... Uh, Papa Malefe, Brian, uh, Aaron... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> not speaking in the most <laughs> glowing of terms about the likes of Salim Essa and some of the other Gupta-linked individuals. But he was quite flattering as when he was speaking about the president of the country, Cyril Ramaphosa. But, of course, that is not surprising because it was Ramaphosa who appointed him to the Transnet board in May last year. Yes, and his board is much like the ESCOM board, which has been dubbed the so-called so cleanup board. And uh, we heard from Molefe speaking quite uh, glowingly about his optimism around the so-called new dawn and what he foresees in terms of turning around Transnet. And it's interesting to hear that because, of course, the citizenry of South Africa are going to the polls tomorrow to vote in an election, and perhaps many will be voting with the kind of graft and allegations of uh, corruption, fraud, and money laundering we've heard about at the state capture inquiry. I mean, Bosasa came like a bat out of hell. Allegations of money going to very senior members of the ANC, uh, hearing about grafted ESCOM and Transnet, and all of that evidence now in the minds perhaps of many voters as they go to vote in the polls. But we also heard about efforts to try and recover money uh, from Transnet's uh, losses. Uh, and here's what Molefe had to say on that front. We began the process, Chairperson, of recovery those monies that we have identified and are able to do so. Uh, in respect of China South Rail, we have already received back 618 million, uh, uh, which was paid in advance to them for a maintenance program uh, under 
material reliability supply agreement uh, which they had entered into with Transnet. It was entered into pretty early, uh, even before they delivered, I think, the locomotives. Uh, they already had our money. Uh, they have cooperated with us. They paid us 618 million, but the full amount that was paid to them was 700 million. Uh, it became 700 million because uh, VAT was inclusive. Uh, we are still waiting to awaiting the repayment of our VAT. They've got to go and claim it from SARS, pay it to us. And the PRASA, not PRASA, but the Transnet board led by Bobo Malefe arrives at Transnet last year in May. And he says what they arrived to was a horror show. Now we're expecting to hear from a long list of other people who are likely to corroborate his version. Yes, he said it was like a horror show, it was like something out of a film or maybe a theatre production, and that there was a flagrant disregard for rules and policy when it came to signing of contracts. Uh, in some cases, for example, a contract worth hundreds of millions of rand signed by a single person, which completely flouts Transnet's own policies. And, uh, you know, you hear him say this horror show, and it's like the Transnet uh, horror picture show. It's kind of like science fiction. You can almost hear, um, you know, the soundtrack of the Rory... Rocky Horror Picture Show in your head. It's so perturbing and ab absurd, really, what's been going on at Transnet. And the scale of the corruption here at Tembekile, it's absolutely shocking. It really is jaw-dropping stuff. And to hear about this and how sort of uh, blasé that kind of graft became at Transnet speaks to the erosion and the endemic corruption that Molefe has described. And as you say, there is a long list of witnesses. We expect at least 13 people uh, to testify on the graft at Transnet and efforts to turn uh, the whole SOC around. Uh, we also know, for example, that uh, Dr. Brian Molefe's uh, counsel were at proceedings today, as were counsel for China South Rail and Transnet itself. So we're certainly just out the stables now, and there's a lot of evidence still to come on this SOC. But an important story on the eve of the elections, this is because you look at some of the names that have come up, you think of Malusi Kikaba, various ministers, Nomfuda Mukonyane, all of them named, implicated in some of the evidence. Yes, no final pronouncement on whether they're guilty, but it is going to be weighing on the minds of many South Africans as they make their way into those voting booths tomorrow. Certainly, and the great sort of uh, conundrum or sort of complexity of the state capture inquiry is that it was instated uh, at the perhaps begrudging uh, behest of former President Jacob Zuma, the same former president whose name has come up time and again in the allegations, not to mention the sitting president who was named in relation to his son's business dealings with Bosasa through an intermediary Chinese company. And so you hear time and again the names of senior, senior leading me members of the African National Congress, both in cabinet and in party structures. Ace Mahashuli, for example, Secretary General, who we saw campaigning ahead of the elections, named in the allegations around graft in the Free State and further afield, and was seen as very closely aligned with the Gupta family. All of that evidence uh, in this process, which has also been punted as a great cleanup, a great purging by the current administration, led by President Cyril Ramaphosa, with his great vision of a so-called new dawn, that being the same ANC we're hearing uh, testimony against time and again during the proceedings. Aaron Bates, Thank you.